Now 31, I had a question coming out of section 3.4, number 5, and here we were asked to find the domains of a bunch of functions, f plus g, f minus g, f times g, and then f divided by g. And I want to remind us of our three domain issues that we're going to run into. They're going to pop up all over the place in this semester. So one, we have to worry about fractions, where the denominator is 0. There's another time when we have to worry about radicals, when you have an even index and a negative radicand. And then third, we have to worry about logarithms. Now, if I look at my original functions, x squared plus 2x and 6 minus x squared, I don't have any fractions, I don't have any radicals, and I don't have any logarithms. So the domain for these two functions, just f and g separately, their domain is all real numbers. So how this works is when I'm adding them together, I still get a function that has no fractions, no radicals, no logs. So that's why the domain here is all real numbers. And when I subtract the two functions, this is what I'm left with. Again, no fractions, no radicals, no logs. Domain's all real numbers. When I multiply the two functions, I get this gigantic polynomial, but still no fractions, no radicals, no logs. Domain's all real numbers. Where we get into trouble is when we look at the quotient. And we get into trouble because I do have a fraction, right? And so I have to worry about when is my denominator equal to zero, right? That's the big no-no with fractions. So I need to set six minus, oops, I hate when that happens. I need to set six minus x squared equal to zero. And when I solve that, if I add, I'm gonna add x squared to both sides and I'm gonna get that x squared is equal to six. And when I square root that number, don't forget the little plus or minus shows up. So I'm looking at plus or minus 6, oh, excuse me, plus or minus the square root of 6. And you can imagine, let me move back over here, if I were to plug in the square root of 6 here, right? If I had 6 minus the square root of 6 squared, that would give me 6 minus 6, which would be 0. And the same would be true if I had a negative root 6, because even if I squared the negative root 6, I would still wind up with 6. So those are two problem areas in our, in our functions, we gotta throw them out of our domain. So our initial domain, right, is all real numbers. Okay, but we need to throw out negative root six and positive root six. And I'm gonna put open dots there because I can't have those, those two numbers in my domain. So I need all of this interval, all of this interval, and all of this interval. And so here's my first set of endpoints, negative infinity to negative root six, negative root 6 to positive root 6, and positive root 6 to infinity, which is why you see that from my domain right there. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.